Hello all, and welcome back to another edition of Mega Movie Drive-In, where we look back at sci-fi, horror, monster, fantasy, and just plain wild movies from yesteryears and yesterday. Today's episode, we will journey to Arizona with a flick called Tarantula, giant monster spider terrorizing the desert. Let's get ready to scream. This is another movie from our good old buddy Jack Arnold. This guy has directed over 20 movies in the movie monster B genre, so I'm sure we'll be seeing him again over and over again in this series. As always, I have to apologize ahead of time before I butcher these poor guys' names. This picture stars John Egger as Dr. Matt Hastings, the good doctor, and Leo Carl as the mad scientist professor Deemer, a specialist in nutrition biology, who is trying to make food sources bigger for the ever-expanding world. Bigger is not always better, which we are going to learn in this case. Our story begins with the sheriff calling Dr. Hastings about a body that was found in the desert. Well, look who's back. Nestor Piava is Sheriff Andrews. Glad he's cleaned himself up from that last job he had. The body that was discovered was that of Eric Jacobs, a biologist working with Professor Deemer. Hastings doesn't believe it's Jacobs, but Deemer lets him know that it is his body. He explains that Jacobs had an aggressive form of acromegalia. Before they can get to the bottom of what killed him, Deemers wants him six feet under ASAP. Cut to the professor returning to his laboratory where he is experimenting on feeding beefed up nutrients to oversized specimens. I can't really imagine cleaving the shit out of those crates. Another deformed colleague of Deemer stumbles in and wrecks the joint. This is where our monster spider escapes. After nearly choking out Deemer, he knocks him out and injects him with what seems to be the nutrients he's been giving the lab animals. Why does he get out the right side? Hastings is still hung up about Jacob's death. He suspects there is more going on out there at the professor's place. Andrews just sees it as case closed, and we have to go with what Deemer says. There's nothing like the safety of prestige, is there, Sheriff? Everything's clean and legal, and I, I wouldn't want you to stick your neck out for anything. Hastings is such a smartass in this process. In pops a side character named Joe Birch, played by Ross Elliott. I sneaked a look at the death certificate over at Barney's. And pretty much busts his chops for not telling about Jacob's death. Here is where we meet our leading lady, Mara Corday. She's trying to get to Deemer's, where she bumps into Hastings, who offers for a ride to the professor's place. Well, I wouldn't want to impose on you. Oh, he won't mind. This movie has a couple of small little humor scenes in it, and here's one. Ain't you two going to introduce yourself? No. no. She's going to grad school and doing a work study under Deemer, which includes... I'll be laboratory technician, cook, student, well, the whole works. And, uh, yeah, probably that too. Anything for an A+. I doubt it. Not sure how they missed that giant spider behind them. Just so we're clear, breaking and entering was not a crime in Arizona in the 50s. Once arriving at the professor's, they discover that the lab has had a fire. We see Birch here again. The professor tells him that the fire was caused by a short in the electric panel. As he is introduced to Steve, as what we're going to call her as the movie is moving forward, which is kind of strange, she has a guy's name and she's the only woman in this movie. I'm not sure how they ran out of women's names, but... Anyway, she asks about another professor named Paul, who it turns out was the man that started the fire. After a few days of experiments, we see that the acromegalia is starting to take effect on Deemer. While in town, Jen... Steve! I mean Steve, bumps into Hastings, and Matt is still trying to get more information on Deemer and his work. But once we return to the lab, we see that the doctor has begun to change rapidly in the amount of time Sarah... Steve. Steve was gone. After the spider goes on a full night of terrorizing, Matt is able to obtain a sample of the spider's venom. Oh yeah, spider splooge. After Hastings brings the sample to his friend, he determines that it is insect venom. Arachnid venom, to be precise. And it happens to be the deadliest in the desert. That sounds like an old WCW pay-per-view name. He puts in a call to Andrews to round up a posse to hunt down the monster and to meet him at the Demon's residence. He rushes back to save Becky. Steve! Steve. Steve. We now see the monster return to its first home to destroy the house and the lab, along with Professor Deemer, who has really changed his look. It's coming, Matt! I can see it! Yeah, now we see it, of course. Didn't see it the other six times it was behind you. The posse makes a few attempts to slow down the beast, but to no avail. They only have one option left. Jet fighter planes to blow this mother father to pieces. Sergeant, tell them to load up with napalm rockets, anything they've got. Hot damn. I've heard rumors that one of these pylons is Clint Eastwood, but I can't say for sure or not. 
So as the planes light the tarantula up, our heroes look on in total awe. And our movie ends. And that is Tarantula. A fun little movie to kill a rainy afternoon with. Movie has a great plot. Not the normal monster created by a nuclear bomb, but instead by feeding him an atomic isotope. The middle drags a little bit for about five to ten minutes, but it picks up after that. Kind of has a quick resolution for the arachnid, but hey, that's napalm for you. Hey, thank you all for watching once again, and we will see you next time for more giant bugs, monsters, muckmen, and who the hell knows what's else.